Shooters and reloaders out there, Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the hot lead zone. And what you're looking at is the instruction sheet right there, complete instructions that Lee includes with every one of their bullet molds. And the summation says the whole thing. It says there, all lead bullets must be lubricated. Now, I'm not talking about jacketed bullets because lubricating jacketed bullets is an option. But all lead bullets must be lubricated. Now, what tripped off this video was a recent thread that was being done between Jim Vaughn and Brandon Salyer. They were discussing the various ways to lubricate bullets and the discussion was about the traditional lubrication versus the powder coating. And the colors of powder coating was kind of like compared to women's lipstick and this kind of thing. So it started getting a little heated in the thread. So I thought I'd do this video to try and affect unification because we're all in the brotherhood of cast bullets. The method of lubrication should not pull us apart. So it turns out that, yes, all lead bullets, all cast bullets, must be lubricated. But what we've got is a division in the ways that lubrication can be done. And these divisions, these different ways of doing it, are actually dividing the cast bullet shooters into four camps. What you got is a main break off right here between the traditional lube and grease cast bullet shooters and the powder coated and the coated bullets cast bullet shooters. Now in the greases and lube camps there are two. Let's go over those first. So your most traditional are your grease groove lubricator sizer bullet casters. And in this camp, you have the shooters and reloaders that like to do the traditional lubing using the machines that inject the grease into the grease grooves. And this includes in this camp also the pan lubers that apply the grease in the grooves by doing pan submersion and then cutting the bullets out of the cakes of, of uh, grease. Now, casters and reloaders in this camp have no problem spending hours and hours running bullets through their lubricator sizers. And even pan lubing takes a lot of tedious effort. But the results are nice. And this group includes uh, some dedicated target shooters and traditional hunters, this kind of thing. Now, another camp in the grease and lubes division is the tumble lube casters and shooters. And these like to use liquid allox either by Lee or by companies such as White Label to lube their bullets using tumble lube. And there are various types of derivatives of this, including the 45-45-10. And in this camp, they really are happy with the fact that they can lubricate a lot of bullets quickly by tumble lubing. And the feature is the lead molds that are tumble loop molds with the small tiny grooves that allow the tumble lubed to be done with best effect. And 
The Lee Tumbalu molds tend to cast bullets that are closer to the final size without needing sizing. With a total time commitment of say 15 minutes for a thousand bullets. So there's some real speed here in this camp. And part of the reason why this camp likes to do it the way they do it is because of the speed. And both of these are effective in creating cast bullets that shoot and perform very well for us. Now in the powder coated bullets division there are two camps. One camp is the powder coated shooters and reloaders. And what they like to do is use powder coating uh, like the paints used in the automotive industry to go ahead and coat their bullets with a encapsulation that allows no lead shooting and no lube no lube uh, handling because the powder coat that's on the bullets with its lubricity is the lube itself. Now the other camp in the bullet coated division is the high tech and they like to do very thin liquid mix powder types to coat their bullets and do multiple coatings to produce a very nicely coated bullet that has a very good finish. So you'll actually see casters and reloaders that are in the powder coated division vying and arguing and debating over the goodness of powder coating over high tech and the high tech fans, the camp that's here, kind of arguing and debating over the goodness of high tech over the powder coat. Both these systems work well to give us bullets that shoot well without leading and with less lead exposure, less smoke, and no grease or lubes on the hands, fingers, or dyes that need to be cleaned out because of these nice clean coatings. So what we see in the casters and shooters reloaders today is that these camps contain shooters and reloaders that are fervently in favor of their camps over the others. So that you have four camps with these types of shooters and reloaders in there that are ready to, to debate and defend their own way of lubricating their bullets. You'll also find casters and reloaders who actually are members of more than one camp. Perhaps even all four. Because they recognize that all four work and the goodness of each one allows good performance and success. So seeing Jim Vaughn and Brandon Sawyer almost become argumentative in their thread saying remarks that tend to attack a different camp while defending their own camp? This need not be. I propose that every camp recognizes all the others and the fact that there's more than one way to lubricate our cast bullets and that our results are good because that's why we belong to a certain camp is because we're getting good results but that all camps give good results and all of our cast bullets are good and we are all in the cast bullet brotherhood. We need to have unification across the whole spectrum of bullet lubrication. So perhaps we can keep our mind open, open to the goodness of other uh, techniques and procedures knowing that uh, they all work well are applicable and useful. There certainly is room in the big world of cast bullets for all ways of lubrication. So good shooting, good reloading, good lubrication of cast bullets, good casting to all of you out there. Take care. See you next video. Bye for now.